Welcome to Hard Questions, where we gather pastors together to take on your tough questions and answer them right from the Word of God. I'm Tom McGuff, and I'll be moderating this edition. And joining us on the panel will be... Dr. William R. Glaze, Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh. Chris Gibbs, Pastor Crossway Community Church in the Mars area. Pete Jack Looney, Rainbow Temple Assembly of God Church, McKeesport, Pennsylvania. J. Anthony Gilbert, Kingdom Restoration Christian Center, Mount Washington. Gentlemen, uh, we begin this episode with a really good question and one that I believe each of you will have a personal context to. How do you know that you're called to be a pastor? Well, you know, as, as I look at it, I believe it's Ephesians where it talks about one of the gifts is pastor shepherd. And so that, that lets me know that when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, that he brings gifts. And if that gift is a pastor shepherd, you know, one of the things I take away from that is that you really have a heart for people right. and you really have a heart to see them line up with the word of God and walk in the way of God. And so your, your passion, your desire, your purpose is, is caught up in wanting to see people right with God. That's right. Consummate life coach, I would say. Right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I'd, I'd answer the two ways. One is because I, you can tell that you're called to do it is because you don't want to do anything else but that. Uh, or you tried to do everything else and you're like, that doesn't work, that doesn't work, and then pastorate is what you have left. I mean, that's usually not the first thing in people's cards to want to, want to jump in and be a pastor. Uh, the second thing is, I believe, is what are you willing to do mm. even if nobody pays you to do it? Mm. Um, so I think as a pastor, if you, you know you're a pastor because you're pastoring even when you're not getting paid for it. Mm. So a lot of times people may look at it thinking it's good to be a paycheck in some churches. Well, it depends on you, how you get connected. You could jump in and get a good paycheck. But if you really, really have a, a passion to be a pastor, you're going to be shepherding people. Even if nobody pays, you're going to be visiting people. That's you're right. going to be spending time with them. You're going to be pouring into that's people because that's, that's what your passion is, even before you have the title. That's that gift. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And if, let me give, uh, let me just give a, a scriptural reference to what you had said, because uh, Ephesians 4, 11, it says, so Christ himself gave the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers to equip his people for works of services. But the, here's the word that I, I think we need to understand. So Christ himself gave. So this is the idea that there is a giving, there is an appointing, and we have to be listening. How do you know if you're called? Are you listening? Are you seeking God? God, what do you have for me? And it, it, does that calling have more to do with what I want or does it have more to do with what I know that is what you want? Because when my will, when his will becomes my will, I become married to a calling. And I like how you said it. Because you said it, you know, in a way, if I don't get paid for this, see, I need to be willing to, if it's my calling, it's my calling no matter what it's going to cost right, me right, exactly. and no matter what it's going to in some ways take away from me because I know that my gain isn't going to be in what I'm doing but in who I am doing it for, which is not for people. I'm doing it out of obedience because of the Amen. call that God has placed on my life. That's how you know. Yeah, And I think also along with calling, another good word would be burden. Mm -hmm. Not burden in a way of like you're burdened down, no. but something in you that there's a desire. You're compelled. You're, you're yeah, compelled. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got to go and do, like I think about me as a pastor and as a preacher, as a minister. Man, I would be miserable if I couldn't do what I'm doing with you guys right now. Right. I'd be That's miserable right. if I couldn't go pray for somebody or go be a blessing. Or something. Right. I would want to do. It, it's just in you. You've got to do it. My father-in-law ministered for well over 50 years mm. and what a godly man and, and Lucy's mother, it, just what a, what a wonderful pastoral family uh, they were. And I remember uh, uh, my father-in-law would always tell me that he did everything he could to avoid going into the ministry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, and, and he said yeah. that's how he would counsel people is, is that, that if, if you, you try everything else, try everything else and you right. can't escape it, but that that's you're right. compelled, just exactly like you're saying, yeah. Jay. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, can, can I just say something from yeah, the, sure. the flip side of it? You know, I, I think we have to be careful too because there may be some people out there listening and say, well, you know, if you're willing to do it for free, then we're not going to pay you. <laughs> <laughs> A, wor a workman is worthy of his life. Yeah, I yeah, got a couple I'm churches that I can recommend for you. The Bible says we'll have double honor. That's right. So, so, hey, let's, let's, let's balance that out a little. <laughs> but this truly is obviously a calling that each of us mm -hmm. have, have had in our lives. And if I could just bore down one level to, to the personal. Uh, context of, of your calling. And, yeah. and, and Bill, I'd like to start with you. Well, your calling. if I could say this, and I, you guys don't look at me crazy, 
But I think, you know, I mean, with all that's been said, that happened to me, right? But I think God tricked me. In, in, no, I, I'm, I'm serious. So, so, so let, let, me, let me explain. About Willis? <laughs> let me explain. You know, you know, when I went to seminary, I wanted to be a, a, a teacher. Uh, I wanted to teach at a college or hmm. seminary. And so I started teaching this uh, Bible study and uh, the pastor asked me to come and I was teaching the Bible study and uh, man, just fell in love with the people. And uh, the pastor ended up taking another church and they didn't have uh, a pastor. And I was there Wednesdays, you know, teaching and then they started asking me to come on Sundays. Then I start going to their house. I start visiting, I start doing. And it's like that call just came, you know, and I just felt that that passion, like, you know, like Jay was saying, you know, I felt that passion just to minister to the people. So, I, you know, I didn't go into it with the intention that hey, I want to be a pastor. You know, I, I actually wanted to teach at a seminary and, and God just kind of got me to that point and then flipped the script on me. And he, and he, cha he, did, he changed my heart. He changed sure my heart. He surely did. And I can tell you, just in watching on the Faith and Family Channel, you have an extraordinary passion to pastor your people. Amen. And and in the literal sense, an eternal life coach. Amen. Amen. Pete, how about you? Well, for me, uh, when I got saved at 17, my, my life, because I was going in a whole different direction, my life was radically changed. And I remember I was in a service. It was a, it was a great, powerful service by a very famous evangelist of that day. And as soon as the service was over, I went straight to the evangelist and I asked him, how do you know? Mm. Because I felt the tugging, but knew, didn't. Right, right, right. And he turned to me and said, son, this is all you'll eat, drink, and sleep. Every waking moment, will, 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 there'll be an insatious desire mm -hmm. to want to do his will mm -hmm. as far as being in the ministry. Amen. And it happened. I couldn't sleep at night, couldn't eat, drink, everything I thought was ministry. And again, for me, when I went into the ministry, they gave me a broom. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> That's in those right. days, they, 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 you, you want to be a minister? Go sweep the parking lot. That's right. Go, go clean the, the nursery. Got to serve if you want to leave. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, for me, it started off, I, I never wanted it. I rebuked it in the name of Jesus. I came right? against it, pled the blood, <laughs> ran from it, everything. Uh, when I was two years old, um, I was barely talking and I would set up my animals and I had an upside down hymn book and I was preaching and baby talk and I knew it, a couple words like amen, hallelujah. Blah, 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 amen. And my parents said, what's he doing in there? And they ran in and saw me in there preaching. Mm -hmm. And they said, you're going to be a preacher. So all my life, my dad would tell me that and I didn't want anything to do with it. And then my dad, it was funny, when my dad got into position and he took his call, Every single one of us, we were all baptized in the Holy Spirit in my parents' living room wow. after my dad took his call. It's amazing when a man Praise takes his position, how it flows right Praise through his God family. And then all of a sudden, I was out in the club running around. I, I've shared my testimony before on how God supernaturally converted me. And then all of a sudden, I was just running the sound for my dad. And he said, you got anything you want to share? I said, okay, I'll share my quick little testimony. I got up there and I just preached. And it just hit me. And from that point, I dropped the microphone. I was like, no, no, I said I'd never do this, you know. <laughs> and then from that point, the call just took me into a whole different place. Mm -hmm. and, and how God has taken you. Look what the Lord has done and, mm -hmm. and how he's blessing. Praise God. God. so good. Praise God. Chris. Yeah, it wasn't anything I really wanted to do either. I always wanted to go into, you know, a life of politics. And then I wanted to be a teacher. And, uh, and then I remember, you, you'll, you'll get a kick out of this. I've been a part of Pentecostal denomination for, you know, half more half my life. And I uh, received a call to be in ministry at a Baptist uh, summer camp, you know. So, uh, so you were prophetically praying for Amen. me, right? Amen. And, <laughs> and, and so then it was like, okay, but I still had these desires that I wanted to do some different things. And God told me, you do what I give you to do and I will make room for you, for the things that are in your heart. Because he put things in my heart, but he wanted me to lay down some things and follow him. And for the last 20 years, you know, that is what I have done. And for the last 10 years at Crossway Community, that is what my wife and I have done. And it, it is great. When you are in the will of God, he is always your provision. He Absolutely. is always your protection. Yeah. And he is amount. always the one who makes room for what he has given Amen. you. Amen. I can tell you on a personal note, I was called to preach to preach back when I was a ball player, back when I received Christ. I just, man, I just wanted to tell everybody mm. about it. It's been the last few years that God has called me to be a pastor. Mm. And Wonderful. there is a difference. Wonderful. There is a difference to, to pastor yeah. and to have yeah. the concern of the Amen. people. Amen. Well, we just so appreciate this time that we have with you. Gentlemen, thank you. And we want you to send your questions to hardquestions at ctvn.org or call 1-888-665-4483. Thank you so much for being with us and we'll be right back after this.